Hello everyone, my name is ETO and this is ETO Survival, an artistic channel where I create for your entertainment and also your benefit. In this video I'm going to be showing you the basics of pixel art animation using a program called A-Sprite. But before we do that, I want to start off today's video with a story. I've been doing a lot of pixel art lately and my daughter has taken notice. So she walks up to me and she asked me if she can create emojis with using pixel art. And right after I wiped away my tear, I said, of course you can. So I load up Piskel and I show her the basics. I wake up the following morning and she shows me this. I know. Now keep in mind, what makes this extra special is that I didn't show her how to animate. I didn't show her any of those functions, but she figured that one out all on her own. So, super proud dad right here. Okay, so anyway, back to the video. I am going to show you the basics of animation using a program called A Sprite. So, enough talking, let's create. Okay, so first things first, we're going to create a new file in A Sprite. We're going to be working with a 128 pixel by 128 pixel sprite, uh, RGBA, transparent background, hit OK. Second thing second, get your pencil tool which is all the way over here on the right pencil tool or you can hit the shortcut B like Photoshop for brush uh, the shortcuts in A Sprite and Photoshop are very similar uh, one major difference I've come across is to make your brush bigger and smaller it's the plus and minus in A Sprite whereas in Photoshop it's the left bracket and right bracket so um, for your brush type you want a circle brush just like that and we're gonna start out with a bouncing ball now I know that's very cliche but it's not just any bouncing ball it's a ball of goo. Um, so the first thing we're going to want to do is go to your frames okay, and create a new empty frame. Then go back to your first frame and I want you to create a circle. It doesn't have to be perfect okay just like that is fine then actually you know what I'm gonna change the color to like a dark green so it's more goo like almost black okay so what we're gonna have this this ball of goo do is bounce down to the ground and then out I'm going to show you how to do that and it's going to come out very fluid very uh, very fluid okay so then I want you to go to your second frame but I want you to click these two squares this is the onion skin setting so you turn this on and you can see a ghost of your previous frame so it is nice and easy to make sure that your frames are lining up properly and it looks smooth okay so what I want you to do now is I want you to extend the ball of goo just a little past its existing shape so now when we go back and forth we have this we have movement okay we have motion it looks like the ball is moving it's not it's just a frame, one picture after another, but it appears that it's moving. So now we're going to go to a new empty frame. And if you want to, you can use the shortcut Alt-B. 
Uh, and then we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to extend it even further. And now we have something like this. But this time, we're going to actually move the ball. So after you've created the shape of the stretched out ball of goo, you can now hit V or go to your move tool and move it just a little bit. And what we want to do here, I'm going to create something, a reference here for a second. I'm going to create a new layer so you can see what I'm talking about. We'll call this curve. Okay. We're going to create We're, our goal is to create a ball of goo that has a nice curve and hits the ground and bounces out. So we can follow this curve if we want to. We can keep it on for a reference. I'm not going to, but you can if you want to. But this is our basic animation flow. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off so it doesn't distract me. see how it's moving now it's going from its original position and it's starting to launch itself okay so now let's do another empty frame so do this again the nice oval shape okay and now it's launching itself you see the little it's not so much uh, streamlined it comes a little like like it's not a solid object it's it's changing shape because of movement so it looks like it looks like it's an anamorphous like blob type thing okay so now let's do it again and now it's going to come to the crest of its initial jump we're going to start to slow it down and it's also going to start to come together as more of a sphere and not as an oval because it is slowing down in its motion as it reaches its peak of its jump. I don't really like the look of that so I'm gonna move it. That's good. Again. See now I'm not I'm making sure that they're not extremely far apart now. See in the in these two these two are pretty far apart. These ones are not. Why? Because I want the effect to be slowed down. Okay? The farther apart they are, the faster it will appear they're moving, and the closer together they are, the slower it'll appear they're moving. And that's what animation is all about. We want a change in motion. We want fast, slow. Fast, slow. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rhythm. Everything in animation is a rhythm. A constant pace is not um, attractive to the eye. So we want it to be a rhythm. So let's keep going. So now it's hitting its crest and I want it to go down now this is where I want it to start going down so now I'm gonna stretch it out more okay so it's gonna initially start to head down and I want I really want this transition to be smooth and that's not smooth so I'm gonna start over so what I'm going to do is make sure that it's more like the shape the, the, of the previous layer. So now it, it's going to appear smoother. All right, let's see how that turns out. Sometimes you just got to find out how it looks and then go back and change it if you're not happy. All right, I can deal with that for a little bit. Maybe move this one up a bit. That's good. All right, so I'm gonna play this for you. 
Can you see that? It looks alive. It looks really alive and fluid. And that's why I like showing this as, a, as an example of animation. Because that's what animation is. Right? It's about fluidity and movement. All right, so let's continue this. And this is where things start to speed up. So now it's hit its crest, it's slowed down, and now we're gonna drop it and stretch it. And don't be afraid to add little tails and, and you know things that make it look natural. And I don't like that. We don't want to drop it too fast because then it doesn't look right. So now it's starting to stretch out. And use the onion skin as reference. Make it skinnier than the onion skin. Okay, so now you see it's starting to stretch out. Now, at first glance, it might appear that we're going too fast. But I promise you, when we press play, it's going to look proper. Okay, so now we got the initial jump, the stretch, the unstretch, the crest, the dive, and the, the extreme stretch. Okay, so we're going to want to go down. And we're going to go down about one more time in the same uh, pattern before we squash and hit the ground. So let's do one more frame before we do that. You know what? For the ease of it, I'm just going to make this a new frame and move it down. New empty frame. So now we're going to hit the ground. When we hit the ground, we want it to stretch a lot, but not too fast. Okay, so look at that. It's hitting the ground, it's splatting. The, the bottom part goes outward. The top part comes down. And it, the top part goes into itself. This part will go into itself and disappear and all that motion, all that fluid will get pushed to the sides. And now we're going to keep going. We're going to really get it in an extreme splat. And now, when we get When we get to the very, very bottom, and there's no more of the top part left, and now it's just completely flattened. So we get to, when we get to the bottom part, um, the very, very bottom, and the whole the whole shape is completely flat. This is where we want to go up and out. Now think about it this way: it has kinetic energy moving to the right. 
It jumped to the right and went down straight. But that's still, in cartoon world, that still means that it can bounce to the right, especially if it's alive, okay? If it's alive, it can go whichever way it wants. And it appears to be alive, so it's, it can do that. So this is where things get a little interesting. Now we can, uh, if you really want to, you can make it splat and just, that's it, just splatter. And you know, if you don't want to follow this tutorial exactly, maybe that's a good direction for you to go in. Uh, make it splat, make the whole thing come apart. But uh, for now, I'm, I'm going to uh, just make it bounce off the screen. So again, just like the initial jump, but a little on, more on the extreme side, um, we're making it move to the right. And every inch we move outward, the same amount is being taken away from the sides. Okay, or else it won't look natural. It, it will look like the shape is growing and moving as opposed to stretching and moving. reason I'm not talking is because it is we're literally doing the same exact thing that we did before so it's not really necessary to explain it again uh, one important thing right here you see that it kind of looks a little jagged so one thing that we can do is we can move it up one and then erase some so it looks like streamlined So let's finish this up. All right, let's see how that looks. That's not bad. Honestly, I like it. Uh, let's turn off the onion skin. And just appreciate this for a second. Uh, the only criticism I have about my own work is when it hits the ground right there, it's a little slow. I think maybe I could add less frames I could take away some so it looks a little more natural but it follows the it follows the the uh, the physics of what this shape what this um, you know organic matter is it's it's rubbery it's almost like oily it can stretch it's almost like liquid uh, if it wanted to, it could probably melt into a puddle and then reform. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting. Now, keep in mind, um, 
this these animation principles aren't this, this, the animation principles that I just taught you uh, don't just apply to a sprite they apply to everything so you don't have to own a sprite which you could easily it's like really cheap but um, you don't have to have a sprite you can use any animation um, uh, product you can use Photoshop if you really want to uh, you can even do hand-drawn 2d animation um, if you know how to build a light box uh, this isn't just about a sprite this is about animation um, so yeah if this video was helpful please leave a like if you want to see more content like this you could sub my channel by clicking the logo right down below you can now also follow me on Twitter and Facebook under the name ETO Survival. And if you have any feedback or comments, my inbox is always open. Remember, always be kind to yourself. We all make mistakes and get frustrated. And honestly, your work is probably better than you realize. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next video.